Today on Rappler. You say that you are the lead convener of Kaya Natin. Your Honor, meron po kaming ka caravan of good governance. Uh, sa mga... Asus, ang dami mo ah. Termino, pero ka ang champion. Yung pala ang champion ay kasapi nyo. Meron ka yung caravan. Yung pala ay grupo lang ninyo. Is that good governance? You are trying to mislead the Filipino public with your prestige or your influence, even only on the basis of numer- numericality. Harvey Kidd, the sender of anonymous files to Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile, gets clobbered in the Senate. Lead Defense Counsel says opening the Chief Justice's dollar accounts is not a sure thing when he testifies on Tuesday. And Dean Tony Lavinia says Ombudsman Morales' testimony is a game-changer in the corona trial. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. We promise uncompromised journalism that hopefully inspires smart conversations and ignites a thirst for change. The defense calls three hostile witnesses to the stand, former Akbayan Representative Risa Ontiveros, Kaya Natin convener Harvey K., and lawyer Emmanuel Santos. Ontiveros says she did not mention Corona's alleged $10 million accounts in her complaint to the ombudsman. She adds the evidence she attached to her petition were all gathered from the impeachment trial. Ang purpose ko namin, Your Honor, sa pagsulat kay Ombudsman Morales ay hilingin bilang mga mamamayan, hilingin na investigahan ng Office of the Ombudsman yung issue ng dollar accounts, alang-alang sa full accountability. At masaya po ako, Your Honor, na hindi kami nabigo ngayon ang Office of the Ombudsman ay tumutugon sa mga request ng mga mamamayan. Antiveros was soon dismissed by the court. Kaya natin convener Harvey K. receives a severe browbeating from the defense, Senator Judges and Presiding Officer Juan Ponce Enrile. Defense counsel Dennis Manalo grills K. about anonymous documents he sent to Presiding Officer Enrile. You, are you an employee of any of these banks? No, Your Honor. So you, you cannot guarantee the accuracy of any of the accounts or the entries mentioned in those documents, is it not? Already answered, Your Honor. In other words, Mr. K, gawa-gawa mo lang itong mga dokumentong to, is it not? Let me ask him directly, Your Honor. Are you the one who prepared these documents? No, Your Honor. And really asks K, why did he send the documents to his office and why did K bring a TV crew with him? You, Mr. K, along with several others, accompanied by a TV media group, went to my office and presented this to my receiving clerk. What was your purpose in giving this to me and uh, uh, in the sealed envelope with, with the television crew accompanying you? Yes, but uh, you, ha- you had previously filed the complaint with the Ombudsman. Complaint. Why did you not bring this to the Ombudsman instead of bringing it to the uh, presiding officer in this impeachment? Senate President orders Kerr to, quote, show cause why he should not be held in contempt for attempting to influence an officer of the court. I felt insulted and offended. Uh, I would like to first uh, express my sincere apologies if you felt uh, insulted. Harvey Kiss, very public humiliation, did not end with the possibility of being held in contempt of court. Senator Miriam Santiago, livid with rage, went well beyond her allotted time to berate care. Were you a witness to all of these accusations that you make against the Chief Justice? Uh, no, Your Honor. You cannot even be a witness and you're, you are foisting yourself as a complainant before the public? What kind of good governance are you trying to promote? You're acting on anonymous sources. Every time there is something that requires identification of the source, the prosecution says there is no source. It came anonymous. Anonymously. Who is Mr. Anonymous? 
You say that your lead convener of kaya natin. Ilan ba kayo sa lead sa kaya natin? Ilan kayong kachape? Uh, yung members po namin, Your Honor, uh, around mga 1,000 plus po. Ah, 1,000? Ano proof mo na may nung isang libong tao? Meron po kami pinapafill out po na membership forms, Your Honor. Ah, di po pumunta sila kung sa, sa inyo. Tapos nga sabi nila, gusto namin member ng kaya natin. Yan bang ibig mong sabihin? Uh, Your Honor, meron po kami ka caravan of good governance. Uh, sa mga ah, so, ang dami mo ah. Termino, meron kang champion. Yung pala ang champion ay kasapi nyo. Meron kayong caravan. Yung pala ay grupo lang ninyo. Is that good governance? You are trying to mislead the Filipino public with your prestige or your influence even only on the basis of numer numericality. Only on the basis of numbers. You are now in danger. You are now in jeopardy of being charged criminally. Kaya you are actually using your organization so called if it exists. So that you can lay the foundations and make the Senate party to your machinations for a second comp impeachment complaint. That is my. Ke was also questioned by Senator Jingoy Estrada, who zeroed in on his alleged grandstanding for the media. When you receive these documents, I hope you, you will answer this truthfully because you're under oath. Go ba nagtatawagan mo reporter? Para ilako ang story mo. Your Honor, if uh, sa totoo lang po, if I wanted publicity, dapat uh, sa totoo lang po, nagtawag na lang po ako ng press conference. Eh kung nga nagtawag doon sa opisina ni Senate President, you don't want publicity. Nag Meron ka bang tinawagang mga reporter? As far as I can remember, uh, wala po akong tinawagang uh, reporter. Uh, meron lang po akong uh, tinext... Uh, Ay, yung kaibigan ko po sa Abante po, si Mr. Makasait. Uh, nabanggit ko po. Opo. Kanino? Uh, sa, sa kaibigan ko po, si uh, Ms. Tina Dumlao. Hmm. Gusto mong pasulat sa kanya para tuloy masira yung kinamumuhian mo, yung respondent dito sa kasong nito. And then now you, you admitted that you are trying to call uh, reporters. Sinungaling ka. Former Isabella Governor Grace Padaka laments the way Kaya Natin convener Kerr was treated in the impeachment court. In tears, Padaka asks, in a country where you cannot fight justice face to face, the lawmakers are furious over anonymous sources. Mahirap lumaban sa katotohanan. Galit. Parang anonymous. Parang 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 galit na galit sila sa anonymous. We have a country where ang justice eh, hindi ka makakalaban ng harapan. Diba? Yung bang ikaw na nga yung merong mer, ah, ikaw, <coughs> ikaw na nga yung merong gustong ipaglaban. Ikaw pa yung masama. Let's go to the Senate to talk to Rappler Senate reporter Ayi Makaraig. We've confirmed that the Chief Justice will testify when the court resumes Tuesday. Ayi, you talk to the defense. How do they feel? Maria, they are saying that Chief Justice Renato Corona will not go down without a fight. This is a statement of Lead Defense Counsel Serafin Cuevas on Corona's testimony this Tuesday. He says the biggest issue the Chief Justice will face is his bank deposits because the defense believes it has already established that Corona has five and not 45 properties. But contrary to Corona's previous media statements, Cuevas will not promise that the Chief Justice will disclose his dollar accounts. He says there is still a pending legal battle in the Supreme Court. The defense also calls Ombudsman Morales' testimony as inadmissible in court. They say it was not included in the impeachment complaint and also covers ill-gotten wealth, which has already been ruled out by the Senate. Here is Cuevas' response on whether Corona will disclose his dollar accounts. We will see. Dahil tinitimpla din namin ang takbo ng Mr. Sino? No, we had... Eh, meron nga kami ang petition sa Supreme Court. Hindi kung ganun, dinismiss na namin yun. We were asking that they could be joined. Hindi niyo po ilalabas yung dollar accounts? Eh, hindi pa kami nagkakausap ng kung anong final decision niya riyan eh. Ano pa ng super justice yung pinag-agreehan nyo na ipepresent niya? 
to defend kami himself. ni Chief. Mm-hmm. Bah, hindi niya may iwasang hindi magpaliwanag niya, kundi kung matatalo rin lang kami. Ano, matalo na kami lumalaban. Persinta niya ang kanya. Hindi po pwede yung hindi siya kikibo. But- What's next for the defense, Maria, is to go over Corona's bank records in the coming days to prepare him for his testimony on Tuesday. That testimony is expected to last two days, but the defense admits it cannot control the length of the questions coming from the senator judges. They expect at least 10 out of 23 senators to ask questions of the chief justice. Corona will be the very last witness of the defense and in this impeachment trial. Maria? Thank you. I am Makaraig at the Senate. Lead prosecutor Neil Tupas Jr. says they are ready for the Chief Justice to take the witness stand in his impeachment trial on Tuesday, May 22. The team has yet to decide who will cross-examine Corona, but they already have a short list of five prosecutors. Uh, we are ready. Uh, myself, uh, Congressman Farinas, attorneys uh, Mario Bautista, uh, Art Liam, as well as uh, J.G. Hosiniano. We've been preparing for this, and uh, any one of us can do the cross on uh, on Tuesday. We'll, we'll decide uh, this weekend. Uh, the bank accounts will be the first few questions. Uh, we're confident. Well, does the Ombudsman's power to probe public officials override procedures in the Anti-Money Laundering Act, or AMLA? This was the crux of the issue when Senator Judges grilled the Ombudsman Tuesday on the scope of her power and its possible abuse. Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago says, under AMLA, a bank inquiry can only be conducted after the following process. The AMLAC, AMLC, first finds probable cause against a public official, then a complaint is filed with the Department of Justice or the Office of the Ombudsman, and the concerned government agency does a preliminary investigation on the official and examines bank accounts. In Corona's case, the Ombudsman went to the AMLC, the AMLAC, first. Ateneo School of Government Dean Tony Lavinia says the power of the Ombudsman and the AMLA are based on two different laws that are equal in status. Lavinia adds, Unless the AMLA says the Ombudsman cannot do it, then she can exercise all powers under the Ombudsman's law. He also says there's the sal N waiver. Roberto Cadiz, Executive Director of the Lawyers Group Libertas, holds the same view. Quote, the Ombudsman Act and AMLA can precede each other. In the Corona trial, it was the Ombudsman who initiated the fact-finding investigation, thus preceding the AMLAC. A private prosecutor in the impeachment trial of ousted President Joseph Estrada, lawyer Pablito Sanidad says, the authority given to the Ombudsman precedes AMLA because it's stipulated in the 1987 Constitution. Sanidad says, constitutional provisions always prevail over any other law. If it was a bluff, it certainly backfired. This is the opening line in Dean Tony Lavinia's blog on Rappler.com. Lavinia says the defense strategy to summon Ombudsman Morales boomeranged. The dean, of, the dean of Ateneo's School of Governance says, quote, Perhaps by now many are entertaining the suspicion that the millions of dollars are owned by somebody else other than the Chief Justice, that he was a mere dummy, a bagman, a depository of sorts. The latest statement by the Ombudsman that significant transactions coincided with certain significant events such as the elections or the filing of the impeachment case give credence to these insinuations. It is not yet game over, but certainly the game has changed. The bar the Chief Justice must hurdle to be acquitted is much higher now than before Morales testified. Using her powers in the Constitution and existing law, she has opened a pathway to transparency and accountability we have never seen before. Read more of Dean Lavinia's views on Rappler.com in Thought Leaders. World boxing champion Manny Pacquiao looks like he's getting pummeled after speaking his mind on gay marriage. In an interview with the National Conservative Examiner, Pacquiao criticizes U.S. President Obama's support for gay marriage. The Sarangani representative says, quote, God's words first. Obey God's law first before considering the laws of man. The report referred to a biblical quote from Leviticus saying, quote, if a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, they must be put to death. 
Pacquiao's statement enrages the LGBT community. The group Gay Marriage USA initiates an online petition for sportswear supplier Nike to end sponsorship of the eight world division champion. The gay community, a strong presence online, hit Pacquiao repeatedly in the virtual world. Celebrity makeup artist Jigs Mayuga tweets, I'm so angry. This statement from Pacquiao will resonate to his million fans who will think it's cool that gay men should be put to death. Twitter user Ralph Thomas comments, You cannot please everybody. And says Pacquiao is just being true to his faith and belief in the Bible. Rappler looks back at the 10 best moments of the 2012 Palarong Pambansa. At number 10 on our list, lights filled the sky as thousands of athletes gathered and released sky lanterns in the closing ceremonies. Number 9. The Special Games reminds us no obstacle is too big to overcome. You have to try. At 8th, Belgian-Chinese Maureen Emily Shrivers breaks the secondary girls' high jump record, clearing 1.62 meters and finishing first in every event she competed in. At 7th, rivalry continues as Western Visayas faces off with NCR in the secondary girls' volleyball finals. The two regions have met in the finals since 2008. NCR took home this year's title. At 6th, President Aquino opens Palarong Pambansa and promises an increased commitment to developing sports in the Philippines. At 5th, Central Visayan archer Carl Christian Mari breaks four Palaro archery records, helping his region take the secondary boys archery title for the second year in a row. Number four, barefoot sprinter Dexter Galos of Western Visayas overtakes Cars Arnold Gallup to take home the first gold medal of the ye this year's Palarong Pambansa. Galos beat Gallup by a fraction of a second. At third, after a year-long break from Palaro, NCR's Delia Cordero rejoins the competition in glorious fashion, breaking two swim records this year. At number two, Angelica De Josef of Western Visayas breaks two records running barefoot through the tracks in Pangasinan. She also won two gold medals for her team. And finally, at number one, the most inspiring story for Rappler this year in, in the Palaro, athletes from Cagayan de Oro and Iligan, the city's hardest hit by Tropical Storm Sendong, dedicate their performance this year to their loved ones killed by the devastating calamity. They finished among the top five, one of their best performances in years. Let's go on to, to the next story, the owner of GMA, Gozon says that uh, businessman Manuel Pangilinan of PLDT and TV5 has been interested in GMA since he tried to negotiate a deal nearly a decade ago. Pangilinan denies ongoing negotiations at this time but expressed varying degrees of interest last year. Pangilinan holds massive communications infrastructure that could help GMA7 since the group has no cable or broadband assets. The three families who own GMA7 have agreed to sell their nearly 75% stake for the right price. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number three, newly inaugurated French President Francois Hollande went straight to business on Tuesday, flying to meet German Chancellor Angela Merkel to discuss the debt crisis in the Eurozone. France and Germany are the largest economies in the EU. Both leaders pledged to work together and prepare for a regional meeting next week. Fueling the uncertainty at number five, Greek elections again. Greeks, Greece's future in the Eurozone is in doubt after a last-ditch effort to form a government failed 10 days after its last elections. This political limbo until elections next month is increasing anxiety. Depositors withdraw nearly $900 million on Monday alone. At number eight, Researchers develop a new generator that can produce electricity simply by pressing a finger on genetically engineered viruses. The M13 virus, when coated on an electrode, can produce enough energy equivalent to a quarter of a AAA battery. That's enough power to make one digit appear on an LCD display. And at number nine, Indonesian police cancel Lady Gaga's concert scheduled for June 3 after Indonesia's hardline Islamic Defenders Front, known by its Indonesian acronym FPI, warned of violence if Mother Monster, whom they call the Devil's Messenger, arrives. Fans started hashtag Indonesia saves Gaga 
to try to overturn the police decision. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, May 16th, 2012. Visit rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. <laughs>